This is our spindle. It is a 2.2 kilowatt spindle and we have them in 110 and 220 volt varieties. The spindles that we offer, we have tested many different spindle manufacturers and we found a really good one that has four bearings. If you're purchasing this type of item on eBay or, or any other website, that allows you to buy it directly from China, then you'll find that your support will be limited. But we'll support ours because we've searched really hard for the, for the right spindle, and we will support this spindle completely. The spindle's power wires are at the back center, and you'll have three main wires that connect to the coils of the spindle. This is a water-cooled spindle, and there are an in and out ports on the back. The water cooling aspect of the spindle allows for no air movement through the spindle to cool it. It's cooled only by water. So that's going to eliminate any pushing of air through the spindle like you'd have with a router, which will push the dust throughout the shop. Water-cooled spindles do not push dust around. So you can easily collect the dust using a water-cooled type spindle. And because you're not pushing air out of the spindle and you're able to collect all the dust on the CNC machine while milling, your shop environment is going to be clean. The ports for the hose require a hose that is an inside diameter of a quarter inch. This is a standard fitting for a quarter inch hose. And the outside diameter can be three eighths of an inch. Either port can be used for in and out. The only aspect that you need to consider is that water flows through the body of the spindle. The sound level from a spindle like this is also extremely low compared to a router. When you're spinning up a spindle, it sounds very quiet compared to a router. A router will be extremely loud. In most cases, the dust collection system is actually louder than a spindle. But when you're using a router, the router actually is the loudest portion of the CNC machine or CNC router. It comes with a quarter inch collet. This is the collet nut and the collet. The collet fits into the shaft. There's an inside taper inside the shaft that matches the taper of the collet. And when the collet is pushed in, it squeezes down the, the inside diameter, the bore, to clamp the end mill that's being inserted into this portion. The collet nut is what brings this collet into the shaft. To tighten the collet for the spindle, you use this portion of the shaft, you can see those flats on the shaft, and you'll fit a wrench around that, and then you'll fit a wrench around the collet nut. Tighten it in this direction here. You want to try to squeeze the two together. At the final tightness, you want to tighten it with a sort of a, a squeezing of the two wrenches. So you're not doing something like this, where you can actually hurt yourself. Conversely, when you're loosening the collet nut from the collet, it's more important to have safety in mind. And when you're loosening it, the collet nut is going to go in this direction. So you'll want the, the one in the front and the one in the back in the shaft to be in this position. And you don't want to, to try to loosen it like this because it's going to pop loose and it's going to do it very quickly and you're going to, you're going to hit your knuckles together. So you'll want to make it so you can get these two pretty close together so you can fit your, your wrist around it. And when you're squeezing, it's going to pop. So you can imagine if you were having two hands and trying to loosen it the other way, your knuckles could hit each other doing that. Spindles can't just be plugged into the wall and work. You need what is called a variable frequency drive or VFD. It's also called inverters. And what this does is it takes the standard power from the wall, which is either 110 or 220, and then it changes the frequency of the waveform coming from the mains, and it creates a variable frequency from that to change the speed of the spindle. In the wall, you generally have a single phase, which is a single waveform, a standard sine wave, which is an alternating current, and it takes that and it creates three phases to operate the spindle, because the spindle has three coils, and it needs to produce three phases of power for the spindle. The VFD has a potentiometer here to adjust the speed, but speed can also be adjusted within the control software. It will show you all the information on the screen that shows frequency or RPM, direction that the spindle is rotating, any faults or errors that may be occurring during the operation of the spindle. 
and a ton of other aspects of the condition of the spindle. You can control every aspect of the spindle and also set the spindle in a configuration of your choosing. The variable frequency drive will allow the spindle to have PID control, proportional integral derivative, which actually means that it maintains the speed under different loads. So the spindle could be under various loads it could be going very deep into the material and cutting at a specified speed and you'll know you'll generally notice a router will bog down under those conditions with spindles they can maintain that speed maintain the rpm and will not bog under very high load conditions because the variable frequency drive will allow the the current draw from the spindle when needed and even those types of specifications where you're wanting maximum torque or those types of things you can actually set those as well you can manually run the spindle from the variable frequency drive or you can have the controller the software do it for you so you have the run button mode button reverse jog button stop reset enter and varies up and down so you can use the the menu system within the variable frequency drive to set all of the settings that you need to the connections for the variable frequency drive are located on the bottom mainly down here for the actual spindle and then you have a lot of digital terminals for use when you're connecting it to the software to be able to be controlled by the computer. In a lot of circumstances, many of these terminals won't even be used. You're only gonna be using what you really need to use for the operation of the spindle in the VFD.